That's because you haven't stopped drinking since you turned 19. I still can't believe I didn't realize the 91 and 19 connection from last week. I was quite disappointed with myself. It would have been this connection for Vass's birthday on this week's episode. Not quite. No. Are you sure? 94 and no, uh, no. 30? No, uh, no. Because <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that works very well, to be honest. And not very well. I mean, not at all. It's open to interpretation. Hello. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> this is the second time that that's happened. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the F Word podcast brought to you by us. I keep wanting to say brought to you by something. I don't know why I'm for some reason I really want to. But anyways, I'm your host, G. With me is Vass and Anthony. What's up, guys? Hello. What up? Uh, Last week. (laughs) Well, I try, but you guys just end up there. There ends up being that pause and then you guys are literally just like, like Ross from Friends, just hi. Uh, and we had a last, little more sauce on there. I don't know, man. Last actually was I think it was last week that you had more sauce. It was either last week or the week before. Whenever we brought up the Malibu awesome was wanted, sauce. maybe. Uh, last week was Anthony's birthday. This week it's Vass's birthday, mm-hmm. and Vass turns the big dirty thirties. How does that feel? I don't know yet. It's only the week of. We shall see. Do you subscribe to the fact that you are 30, ergo you've already lived the age of 30, and now you've entered 31 to close it out? Because I know some people do that thing where it's like, well, technically I've been 30 for the year. It's just now I'm moving out of 30 into 31 instead of starting 30. No, I've Both never really looked at it like that way. I mean, yeah, I've never really looked at it that way necessarily. Yeah, yeah, it's a dumb no, reason, fair. a dumb way to look at it. No, well, no, I, it's not dumb. It's technically true because you've already lived thirty years. You're just there's no year zero. Like you don't yeah. live your zero year. Your one year is like zero to one, and then when you get one year old, you've experienced it. Maybe I don't know because you don't celebrate the the year zero. But you felt celebrate that first year that you lived, and so you survived one year, ergo one, as opposed to I'm entering one. Technically, now you're entering the survival phase for two. Does that make sense, Anthony? Yeah, it's very phase heavy there, Kevin Foggy. Well, you know, sometimes you just gotta look to your inspiration, inspirational characters, and just take a page from their book. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I guess so. Um, speaking of page from their book. Demolition Man 2 is reportedly going to happen with Stallone. And I've mentioned it on the show before. I really like the first Demolition Man a lot. And I really believe that if there's any movie out there, aside from Minority Report, that could best describe the way that our whole world is going, it's Demolition Man. And uh, so for all of you Demolition Man fans who don't really think you need a second one, but you know, you wouldn't mind it because you love the first one. It's happening. Anthony, have you seen Demolition Man? The only Sylvester Stallone movies I've seen that I can recall at least are the Rocky franchise. So I Great not. movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great well, movies. I want to see the other ones. Like, I want to see Rambo. I just never had the opportunity to or like sat down, like saw it on TV or anything like that. But yeah, no, it's just Rocky. That's been the golden arch for me. The Golden Arch? Hmm. Of course. Is that a thing? As an Italian. Well, I'm making it a thing. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to catch on very much. We'll, well test it out. Golden Arch like is from McDonald's. Law. No, I know, but I don't know if you can necessarily say that, use that as a way to describe the only thing for you in terms of a Sylvester Stallone movie. Or, okay, you know, well, it's like the major, major thing movie. for everybody. If you ask anyone what their favorite Sylvester Stallone movie is, nine times out of ten, it's going to be a Rocky no, no, no. I, I don't disagree with you. I'm just saying that you saying it's my golden arch doesn't make sense. Well, it doesn't have to make sense, G. Not everything Apparently has to make not. sense. 
Apparently not. And that'll follow up to uh, Vass's question. But before we get to Vass's question, because it is his birthday and we did do it for Anthony last week. Mm-hmm. couple of things. So I mentioned Demolition Man 2. Uh, Nicolas Cage is going to be playing the Tiger King in a CBS mm-hmm. scripted drama series, which I think is absolutely perfect. There is nobody else on the planet that I could think of that would have been able to do that role except for Nicolas Cage the second it released. It's like you're thinking in your head, who the hell would do this? And then there was one they guy I had, what's his name? Uh, he was, fuck, he's in all those Adam Sandler movies. His name's Chris is something. What's in the Adam name? Sandler oh, uh, movies? David Spade is what you're thinking of. David Spade, yes, not Chris Spade. David Spade. Right. Yeah, he but was... like, honestly, I'm fine with yeah. Nicolas Cage. Every, I heard uh, a lot of people were bashing him, like, oh, well, why Nicolas Cage? You know, this movie isn't why for not? him, you know. And I'm, first it's of all, not for this, anybody. Isn't Who a, cares? this isn't going to be a serious role. Second of no, all, Nicolas Cage has range, as Jake Peralta says. The man has range. And I think it's more of a joke show. Like, it's not going to be one of those, you know. Or, and as far as I know, it could be a super serious show. But I don't think anyone's coming into this looking at it seriously. It's going to be one of those things that depict how crazy the story is with the Tiger King. And I just mm-hmm. think it's going to be an all-around just good show. Nicolas Cage, I think, is good for the role, so... I'm happy. With I'm going to pause you right there. Am I the only one that's hearing an echo with Anthony's voice? Yep. I am, am I the but only I don't one? know where it's coming from. Oh, yeah, I'm not hearing an echo either. Well, if anyone else is hearing an echo, then I'm hearing it too, and I'm not just going crazy. Anyway, sorry. Yeah, it's literally this thing wouldn't have been anything if the Tiger King documentary wasn't so big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think it needs to have the almost the same tone as the Andy Samberg's movie, the pop star one. Which is like ridiculous. oh my god, I love. I that think that movie. that if you if you have that tone, I think it almost be perfect. Well, the pop like, never stop, never stopping. Yeah. They're what they're doing is actually kind of a prequel of sorts. So how the main guy turned into the quote unquote Tiger King, like mm-hmm. he ended up having his name before, and then he turned into Joe Exotic. So right. in the documentary, they reference how because of his brother passing away, that's mm-hmm. what led to him moving forward, and so I think it's going to be a prequel of sorts which nobody needs to see but i am 100 percent behind because i think it'd be hilarious of of sorts yeah uh so that's super funny and again the second they said nicholas cage i'm like of course it would be but i think david spade would have been funny too i just don't think david spade's as good of an actor because i think Mm -hmm. nicholas cage will actually put his all into this instead of just making it seem like he's making a mockery of whatever he does like david spade's got that thing where even if he's not making fun of something, he just seems like he's making fun of it. And it just well, seems like, like he's just, yeah, it's just the way that he is, right? But if you look at Meet Joe Dirt, you can kind of totally see it. Um, a bunch of bunch of trailers. Skater XL got a customization trailer, and I'm super excited for that. Cyberpunk is getting customizable junk. Genitals. Yeah, for some fucking reason. Uh, Last of Us 2, the trailer dropped, was exceptional and then xbox had their massive xbox x sorry series x had their massive reveal slash bunch of gameplay trailers which weren't actually gameplay trailers they looked like all cgi trailers except for a few moments but they had that going on yesterday did you guys see any of this stuff uh for last of us two i'm trying to stay away just because i'm playing the first one and also just i don't know like i'm you know i don't want to get any more spoilers because somebody commented a bunch on IGN's page but it's a bunch of like very basic spoilers where it's like I could say that without even beat the first game that this is a spoiler and it doesn't mean it's true Mm -hmm. Uh, but no like I want to check out the Xbox One because I'm curious about the consoles and Xbox is seemingly going to beat PlayStation 5 to launch because they're taking the shit seriously they have the specs to back it up everything's kind of going for Xbox right now in the second round of the next gen console war so I'm excited to see what they brought Interesting, Vass. Uh, I did see The Last of Us, both the, they had the story trailer and I think they had the second official trailer, correct? I think that's what it was. I think so the I story mean, trailer was the second was? official one. Okay. I, I could be no wrong. Idea. I don't know. Yeah, I only saw but, one. Um, I haven't played the first one, so a lot of it didn't mean that much what was going on. As it's as a standalone, it looked very good. It looks It looked to be fun, and I know you talk about it like it's a great game. And I haven't played the first one. So, I mean, I think a lot of stuff would be lost for myself um, 
with that because I don't know the the story and how the first one ended and where they're at kind of thing. So I mean, as a standalone trailer looked good. I think uh, I think it'll, it'll be fun. I'm excited. I'll get into the first one someday. Um, but yeah, looks good. And then I also saw that the AC Valhalla, the quote unquote gameplay thing, which wasn't actually gameplay, which is pretty. I, I guess it was in game cinematics, which I guess show you how it'll look kind of, which is whatever, but it didn't actually show gameplay like it should have, but mm-hmm. we'll see. Yeah, it showed some stuff. Um, I went around and I was like looking at all the videos that came out after and I just checked it out. So obviously they had the CGI cinematic opening. They had the tattoo reveal, which it kind of looked like the same trailer from mm-hmm. Black Flag, like the tattoo trailer for Black Flag. Yeah. Um, which is a, which is exceptional trailer like that trailer on its own was unbelievable oh yeah and then it had some gameplay where he was running and he did that jump kick thing on that dude's face and some of the big cinematic battles mm-hmm. and more environmental stuff mm-hmm. what's funny is that it seems like there was a huge miscommunication because mm-hmm. the xbox people were saying that there's gameplay reveals and then ac was like oh it's a teaser trailer or a teaser gameplay and mm-hmm. so everyone was expecting 15 minutes of gameplay or 10 minutes of gameplay like they've done in the past yeah. however i don't know at which phase they've shown that footage mm-hmm. um because a lot of it was also debuted at the time when people were playing it as well so because de- like creators were getting their hands on the game to put on their channels yeah. then they mm-hmm. released it as well but i've seen other people say well no typically they do a initial just cgi straight up trailer okay. then they do one that kind of incorporates the environment um who knows because then asher face mail was like hey i know you guys are expecting you weren't expecting what you got or you're expecting more than what you got sorry but there's more coming because but i also think that xbox had a lot to do with that of the way that they were marketing it versus what Mm -hmm. the ubisoft team was preparing to release there's still lots of time i mean none of these are getting released and they all say holiday well that could also mean like i would say late fall would be typically october i think it's like november december and you think november december well, for Nintendo games, like when they say holiday, it's, like, I don't want to say December, but it's usually like no, no, November. No. A- Anthony, we're not talking Nintendo. Fuck Nintendo. Well, I like, literally said Xbox Series X. When did this we is say- released whoa, October. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm using some other background. Hold on. We're talking Assassin's Creed Valhalla that says, uh, that literally said holiday 2020. And traditionally, it is October, maybe early November. No one brought up Nintendo at all. So I'm sorry, G. Nintendo's... In the past, Assassin's Creed releases, have there been a fucking pandemic that's delayed every release that's come out? Are you keeping that into account uh, as well? Or are you uh, just pulling all of these statistics out of your ass? No, I'm actually just bringing Lawyered. up the fact that you're bringing something up that has nothing to do with what we're talking about. Okay, fine. Continue. It's like, continue. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. It's like we're talking about, hey, like we should go for a walk. Yeah, I would like steak. Nobody mentioned steak. That's what that's you a bad did. analogy. That's a great analogy because that's exactly what fit. you did. We're talking about whatever released an Xbox Series X. We're also talking about AC Valhalla and the fact that it's releasing holiday and traditionally there. I don't know where you got Nintendo from. Well, I'm sorry for using other companies. Well, you know, if we were talking about those other companies, then I'd say sure. No, it's okay. But, the F word has a bias against Nintendo. First it was Nick, and now it's you. Oh, we don't have a bias. You circle jerk them more than anybody on the planet. They deserve that you... circle jerk. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, the other Deck. footage that was released, these are the games that they released in that trailer. Uh, Bright Memory Infinite, which is one developer in China. And the gameplay actually looked really good considering it's one developer. And I don't know to the extent of the developer, if it's one person that made it, Check out the trailer for Bright in Memory Infinite because it was actually pretty wild. Um, Dirt 5, game called Chorus, Madden 21, Call of the Sea, The Ascent, which is this really cool top-down kind of shooter thing, The Medium, Scarlet Nexus, Second Extinction, and Yakuza Like a Dragon. Also, Scorn, which I don't know what the hell that is, but that was the craziest, weirdest, scariest, um, disturbing trailer I've seen in a long time. And then the one that I liked the most was Vampire, The Masquerade, Bloodlines 2. That's what it was called. It looked really good. That's a and then the, game. Holy crap. The, they were, those were all essentially one minute to two minute CGI trailers with a little bit of gameplay in it. That's not bad. The score so are these all like so going to be up. launch titles for the Xbox One S, whatever it's called? Project X? Project S? It, I think it's officially Xbox Series X. 
Okay. Like that's what the that's what everything was coming up. It's like this is I think I'm pretty sure that's the official name. But by the sounds of it, a good chunk of these are releases. Um the only weird thing is, and I've I was watching the whole thing and I was watching all of these trailers back to back, and very few of these looked like they would be like next generation console type of games. And by that I mean if they would have said, Oh, these are just Xbox One games, I'd be like, Yeah, I buy it. Like there's no, there wasn't anything in there that was so over the top in terms of how great the graphics were um, that made me take pause and be like, wow, the future is here. However, I don't know if this particular iteration of next gen consoles is the one that's going to bring that next holy shit moment. Does that make well, sense? I think Vass mentioned this like on the podcast a while ago. A lot of these games that are 4K or whatever, or it might have even been Bo, but a lot of these games that are 4K, you don't actually get to see the 4K unless you have the console that backs it up or the TV that backs it up. So I assume they did this at a presentation, kind of like a presentation style where they, I assume they wouldn't have a presentation with COVID going on, but in the style that they were actually like streaming it. So the quality obviously goes down just like it does on all social media platforms, YouTube, Instagram, whenever you upload something, it always looks shittier than it's intended to. And also, it's probably in beta and not, you know, fully polished yet because we don't even have a release date for the Xbox. It's just going to be supposedly before 2021. Okay. Well, and I, and I think that more developers are going to find that they're going to stretch out these consoles, like the, the abilities of these consoles. Yeah. But it was just it was just one of those things where at, when the PS4 and the Xbox One were released... Like the graphics that were coming out of those was just like holy shit. Was a big like when jump, you jumped yeah. from, it was a huge jump. Mm -hmm. And this might be one of those situations where, like, yes, it is next gen console, but mm -hmm. these last generation consoles from the Switch to the there you go Nintendo, since mm -hmm. you know here you go for Anthony right uh, <laughs> from the Switch, the Xbox, the PlayStation, they made massive jumps in mm -hmm. their power ability their the graphics like how good it looks all that stuff um yeah. and that's i think was a big thing it definitely makes it worth investing in the new consoles because you get that longevity out of it i'm thinking now that you're mentioning it like how far how long ago the ps4 and xbox one were first released at the same time and we're what maybe six years later I would say. I think around I think so. Much, yeah. More. I think it was 2013, 20. So we've had we have we've had solid consoles with minor upgrades all, along the way, of course. Um, and we've had that for six years, the same name, just slight variations, and now we're getting the whole new generational gap. And I just think of like our phones. Every year, there's a brand new one, and you have no chance of catching up. Whereas, like mm. the gaming world actually gives you that chance, and I think that's pretty great but yeah i don't know both consoles will be good i think another thing about the graphics is that as g mentioned there was such a big jump from mm -hmm. ps3 xbox 360 to ps4 xbox one mm -hmm. and like at the time those graphics were you if you wanted them get a pc now the consoles are competing with pc in terms of graphics unless you're mm -hmm. dumping in hundreds of or i guess not hundreds thousands of dollars to have an insane setup yeah. I mm -hmm. think it's kind of like we reached that peak where you can upgrade, but the difference isn't really that noticeable if you're already running that 4K setup on your current PS4 or Xbox One. Mm -hmm. So it will be an upgrade and it will look better, but just honestly, it won't be that noticeable if you've already been so accustomed to having that shit. Yeah. Well, especially if you've had a 4K TV with like a PS4 Pro, for instance, yeah. like the, the even the jump from a regular PS4 to a PS4 Pro mm -hmm. will give you that that graphics upgrade and when you look at people that are optimizing old games like i just watched somebody that had taken um even the witcher 3 and they did it on a pc ultra graphics all the way and i said wow that looks like a next generation console like the textures looked unbelievable the whole thing was just so well done and that's somebody using their pc with ultimate graphics mm. and then the other I thing i have is engine, most likely Unreal Engine? Okay, because I've seen that for well, Ocarina of Time. That's like the most common one. Yeah, Nintendo have a lot of fucking remakes on there that get taken down immediately. For sure. And then the other thing is, so 
how and I, I actually made a note for this for GTA six because that's starting to roll like more I think more news is gonna come out for that soon. Mm-hmm. How realistic is too realistic for a video game? Like Red Dead was very close. Like Red Dead Redemption two had unbelievable graphics. And then the people that are maximizing those graphics and on a still shot, even with like a moving shot, it is it is crazy to see how realistic that looks. Um, you had Death Stranding, which was extremely realistic. And I'm thinking, is is it too realistic? Like, I, 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 don't, I don't see Nintendo going that route, but at least for the Xbox and the PS4, how much realism do we actually want in these games? Well, so many depends people bitch game, and complain. I'll go ahead fast. No, I was just saying, depends the game. I mean, something like GTA, like, the racing games and GTA are kind of the top two. I've noticed that someone has uh, shown like cranked up like realism footage in the sense, mm-hmm. um, but I haven't seen much yet. You'd have to experience it for yourself to see like, okay, you know, I kind of don't like this level of HD or high quality or whatever. I'd rather have the lower end. Just like when you, if you notice, if you buy a newer TV with a higher frames per second, um, you notice a lot of the camera shifts and all that stuff more than you would on a regular TV. So it's just maybe mm-hmm. a getting used to th- it thing, or you'll always revert back to like, you can downgrade it and stuff like that if you really want. But I think it'll come down to getting used to that level of realism. Once you incorporate the 4k game, 4k console, 4k, everything. So it's like, you know, I think GTA would be an awful game to have like really good graphics on just due to the mm. nature of the game, how violent it is, how much shit they have in it. I yeah. assume it will get a, uh, graphics upgrade which isn't, which isn't a bad thing but i'm just thinking it's one of those games where you know it's nice to have that cartoonish violence because it makes you feel like less of a scumbag when you do the things you do and go on a murder spree online in a fucking tank for half an hour you mean like last week when you said you didn't like assassin's creed because it was you couldn't go around killing npcs but then yeah if they but were that's like you know more that's realistic more <laughs> no but well, it, realistic if they decided as an to upgrade it yeah <laughs> do you think Nintendo would do well to go that route? Because I think Breath of the Wild might be like the closest to realistic style graphics that they could get. Just given the nature of Nintendo, their games, their aesthetic, like I think it'd be no. weird if GTA decided to roll out with something that was close to Death Stranding for the Switch, for instance. I think, well, I assume you mean, do you mean GTA or Nintendo? Sorry, uh, I meant Nintendo. Sorry, yeah. I meant Nintendo. I don't it. think that would work at all. Like, for games like Legend of Zelda and Breath of the Wild that have those different, you know, aesthetics, like purposefully, I think it'd be a good change. But for games like Mario and Smash Bros, Mario Kart, nobody really wants to see a realistic version of those with better HD graphics that make it look, you know, more cartoonish, more like, say, I don't know, animated movies and stuff like that, because that's Nintendo's kind of theme. I think it'd be a good call. But other than that, I just don't really see how it'd be in their favor to go and compete with Xbox, just because A, Nintendo's hardware is not like it gets beaten every time it's outclassed by sony and microsoft b their market they're not really uh competing in the same market as sony and microsoft in terms of the actual games they have like for people like me i have you know ps4 and a switch but it doesn't matter for me because i can't buy switch games for my ps4 i can buy ps4 Mm -hmm. games for my uh xbox you know most of them anyway but i can't buy switch games for any other console right I think the closest thing is um, that I can picture in my mind is if Nintendo games started to look like Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Like mm, that, that would be very me, nice. Yeah, like that That would be something that like you can definitely... It's It screams Nintendo, and it would be like, this is that next level. Just like Into the Spider-Verse was that next level in animation, mm-hmm. I can see Nintendo taking on something like that where maybe the shadowing's a little bit more, um, more textured and the characters have more of that it's it's not realistic but it's also not like it's that cross between that comic book style realism Mm -hmm. that's that spider-verse had but um yeah lots of uh, tons of games coming out though like there's a shit ton of games being released and i but obviously this is the time that it was going to happen regardless of the the pandemic or not but we're going to move on because as last week anthony got to choose the topic we are pushing the 20 year thing and vas you've got some topics that you want to bring to the table what you got vas so the first one we'll go through is kind of 
your kind of TV nuances, quirks, or annoyances you find in your favorite ones, and just like how they trigger you, I guess you can say, or bother you, or just affect your viewing of that show, um, and that kind of stuff. And then we'll get into uh, the cast, our own casting of Disney's Hercules live action. So, because we're all Greek, I think it's very fitting that we take a crack at it and see what we come up with and who would be the good fit. <laughs> Sweet. Well, the cool so. thing about that is that they just released a statement from the Russo brothers that they're they're not really going to follow the musical mm. thing. They they're not sure if they're going to follow the musical side, but yeah. they are. They do love the Hercules story, right. and like they've said, they love that story. So, yeah, that's, that's the, got that, me excited. Yeah. Well, I'll go, go get into a little bit more when we touch on that, but. Uh, yeah. First, okay, I'll get on my TV, right? the TV quirks, nuances, annoyances. Uh, I'm going to pick on a two specific ser- TV series right now. Uh, one I recently watched and one I'm watching right now. So I'll start with Spartacus I'm watching right mm. now. And I always found it kind of very weird and odd how they'd always yell the name of the person they're going to attack. And it just <laughs> like, I was just like, why? Why? Like, I'm on uh, Spartacus Vengeance, which is technically see it is where you kind of get argued. Is that season two or season three? I call it season three just because of how it came out. Um, I, it would be season two, though, obviously. Technically, yes, because Gods of the Arena is a standalone. They kind of say it's it, the prequel. Though, yeah. Anyways, yeah. so like Crixus gets uh, gets pissed off at Agron or whatever, or Sedulous, yeah, that big German guy who beat up uh, Navy or whatever. And yeah. he yells his name to go attack him. Uh, and, like, he, he he's probably the most prominent one who yells it, but it happens throughout the series so many times. Um, so that was, it was just weird. I don't know. It's just awkward. It's kind of cringy, I guess you could say, too. And it's like, why? Why why announce who you're going to attack? Just attack him, and he'll figure it out. <laughs> you know what scene I was thinking of, and I thought you were going to say, was the one in Vengeance before all of that, when they were going to, like, when they realized that Navia was in the mines. Oh, yeah, yeah, Agron, yeah. When yeah, he and then Agron. he screams Agron across that little, like, yeah. I don't know what the hell that was, like, the the this, the common area that they were. and But, yeah, they always scream the everybody's <laughs> name. Yeah, the courtyard. Like, yeah, yeah, just... it, it was very odd. Yeah. Yeah, that was that always kind of threw me off. I don't know. That's a funny one. I didn't yeah. think about that until you just said it. Now it's going to bug me. Everyone does it. <laughs> Even Marcus Crassus does it towards the end. Or no, Caesar does it. Remember when Caesar does it in uh, oh, yeah. War of the Damned? To yeah. Crixus? Yep. It's just it's just throughout the whole thing. It's just like it's almost like its own funny joke, I guess you could say. Anthony, um, have you seen Spartacus? I have not. Oh, Dude, watch it. It's so good. Yeah. It is so you'll you'll you actually watch it order, but you will have the best time watching that show. I think so. well, I know Tino and, and Michael really liked it, but I just never really. I was watching Game of Thrones at that time, and it seemed like oh, yeah. that was enough of that kind of show for me. Now it's time to get back That's... into it with this. It's worth it. Um, and another weird nuance, I guess, is what, like uh, the one character in the seer would always like hiss almost when he was attacking or something. The like worst. That. It was just I like hated it. he just developed it on his own. He's like, you know, this is gonna be my thing. I'm gonna hiss. <laughs> every time i want to attack or get mad you know so and no one like, told him no i don't know yeah exactly it's like oh little guy let him let him have his moment <laughs> so yeah it, it was very weird that way i don't know it, it was it was just it's just those cringy moments that kind of you're like ah, why why whatever it is what it is and then it passes and then you it comes up quite a bit throughout and you're like okay now you're just used to it towards the end but yeah okay. i always found those two little quirks funny with spartacus um another one i that uh gets me is suits so there's a couple of weird things like number one they like the goddamn it and son of a bitch count is like beyond throughout that series like you could make it its own drinking game yep. uh or every time harvey specter says this deposition's over like the guy like doesn't have depositions he can't get through one like how does he do his job it's ridiculous <laughs> Uh, so that well, what's funny is that these are almost like very odd yeah sorry i was gonna say like th- these are very much like if you were gonna pick a drinking game around a tv show this is these are the top like these are the ones that you would pick mm-hmm. oh 100 sorry and the other one? Oh yeah we should make our own the f word drinking games <laughs> yeah no shit sure. uh, oh and then it, one yeah. yeah that really sticks out to me is how lewis litz 
pop button doesn't burst every time he walks or does anything like that thing must be reinforced to no end it, just the is way he a bad he, character it, he's a he's a chubby character you've never seen suits either no damn anthony man get on oh, it seems thing. boring it's, as fuck man it's like eight it's, seasons yeah it's not that boring it's it's got its moments for sure but beyond that it's it's worth the watch watch, watch the first Anyways. two seasons you'll be okay yeah but anyways, like the guy's suit, I'm sorry, I swear to God, it should have burst out from like season one every time. But yeah, I don't know. Okay. It's really weird. It's just always focused on them. Like, is it going to pop? Is it going to pop? No, it's not. So, yeah, I don't know for you. You've seen it many times. I too. bet you it has. Oh, for sure. You would never see it, but it's just it's just so funny. I'm like, I always worry about if like the way I'm sitting or the way I'm doing like the guy keeps the button on almost all the time. I don't think I ever see it an open suit jacket on him. But it's just, it's just the weird thing I focus on every time I watch it and he's in the room. <laughs> Mine for him has always been the fact that it almost looks like he's chewing gum, but I think mm. it's just the way his one tooth kind of jets into his mouth yeah. and it's like in the back and it always looks like it's there. It's just really weird. But yeah. Anthony, what do you got? Uh, so I have a couple first being uh there is a basic theme of laugh tracks, but the one show, because I got over it with How I Met Your Mother, one show I was never able to get over it with was Big Bang Theory. And the fact mm-hmm. that none of their jokes ever seemed to be fucking funny, yet they always had five laugh tracks per every five seconds in that show. And it just pissed me off to no extent because it literally ruins A, the joke. So even if the joke was a little bit of, even if the joke was hilarious, the laugh track in that show and how frequent it was made it seem like the humor was just very basic and just not funny. And so that joke, therefore, was ruined. Uh, just laugh tracks in general usually ruin shows to me. I couldn't watch How I Met Your Mother a couple years ago because of the laugh track. But mm. eventually I just got it over with and watched it and ha- loved it. So there might be other shows I'm missing out on. Maybe, you know, Big Bang Theory isn't as bad as I thought. But it, it also isn't very good. I know that. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other one. It's kind of funny because Vass mentioned how in Spartacus they always yell at the name of the person they're attacking. Mine isn't that problem, but with Dragon Ball, uh, A, they fucking have to yell out all their attacks, which I find pretty badass. I'm not complaining. Oh, but yeah. the thing that pisses me off the most about Dragon Ball is the fact that every time it heats up, so they'll build up a fucking big fight or a big attack for a whole episode, they cut the episode, tune in next week. And it's just constantly getting fucking, you know blue balled for all these hype moments that you have to keep tuning in <laughs> <That's good. laughs> oh, so God. it's a structure thing for you yeah it is because is I, that the, why the, the... is ahead. that why you hated the negan reveal like when they they had the cutaway no i loved it i just thought like a it was lazy because they fuck walking dead is awful for this too yeah. like i'll give dragon ball a thing because when it was airing it was fucking week to week but you know walking dead was you know, half a year, and that was it. And Walking Dead was so shitty because they would milk everything for every little fucking dollar they could get with all the shitty filler episodes. And it was just awful because Negan's reveal was really, like, really well done. The kill I loved, even though I had to wait half a year. I didn't even mind waiting half a year because I thought it was a very good, you know, choice. Had everyone interested in the show for long term. But that show just milked everything. Oh, also, you brought me up on this last point for Walking Dead. If you ever watch it, there is a fucking sound clip of crickets all the goddamn time. And someone pointed it out to me, and I could never not notice it. In all the scenes, all you hear are crickets mm-hmm. chirping all the fucking time, even at night, even in day. doesn't fucking matter. They're just always there. Well, you need ambiance. Well, you do, but Jesus Christ, that show was as fucking <laughs> interesting as watching a paint, paint dry. It was awful. I'm sorry, wow. Jesse. I know Jesse loves Walking Dead, but that show, like, I want to finish it because I've invested, like, eight seasons eight or nine seasons but watching it week to week fucking sucks binge watching it not that bad week to week awful right Mm -hmm. interesting well the problem with the binging though is that you do notice more of the things that bother you like so for me the the sofa and i always have this joke now where we always if if there's something that comes up that's not really that serious but we want to make a joke about it we always say like oh you mean goddamn 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 because in suits they always say goddamn every single time and when vast mentioned two weeks ago that i use the word goddamn a lot i'm like oh you mean i just suited that episode because like the first opening (laughs) i just use it all the time so now 
if I if or if one of us if a sofa I says the word goddamn, then the other one would be like goddamn goddamn. Yeah, goddamn goddamn. So it's like we're a Pokemon named goddamn because of how Suits uses it all the time. <laughs> uh I have more my problems with the shows that I like or watch or have frequently paid attention to kind of fall in line with like certain things that are just like more inconsistencies but it's across all shows like i cannot stand i don't know why but i cannot stand when people wake up in the morning in a tv show or even a movie Mm. and they end up like kissing like nothing happened because all i can think of is your your mouth tastes like death right now and you guys are making out like it's not a problem like Mm -hmm. the reality is you guys both stink and then I've been rewatching Lost, which is funny because I re-listened to one of our old episodes because I've been doing some quality control just to see how like those past episodes have been. And I remember saying like Lost isn't a show I'd ever rewatch. Lo and behold, <laughs> I'm fucking rewatching it now. Yeah. Uh, and I think so. I'm enjoying it more than the second time I watched it. Like mm. the first time I was like I loved it. The second time I was like pissing on it. And then now that I'm watching it, just enjoying it, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm enjoying it. Anyways, I don't understand how anybody in their kisses. Or Fox, because they all stink. There yeah. hasn't been like <laughs> a legitimate shower. And then like just by living life, you notice how you can almost smell how things would be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's just like, oh, that would be so gross in real life. What are you doing? And I don't know if it's like a, a thing that I'm annoyed with or something. It's just a thing that I always bring up all the time. I'm like, nope, that never happens. Nobody, nobody has, or sorry. Very few people have as much sex in a bathroom as, let's say, Lily and Marshall, who seem to have that mm-hmm. as her standard bed, because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's disgusting. <laughs> like, I don't even yeah, want to do that at there? all. <laughs> I guess so. I guess that maybe that's where my thought process. But like, is. they're doing it at public bathrooms too, or any bathroom, oh, really. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then the other thing that bothers me about shows, so um, that kind of stuff. I like the stuff that you guys brought up because now that I'm thinking about, I'm like, yeah, I, that does annoy me and then the other one is just like inconsistencies and shit like especially if i watch a show a lot of times so for instance again i feel like we're turning into the how i met your mother podcast but like in how i met your mother whenever barney brings up his sister that he in the first season even though he doesn't know he has a half sister until the last season and he brings up karma because he brings up Mm -hmm. in the first season is like ah but karma we're good even though he doesn't meet a karma until like the very end I'm just like, ugh, that really pisses me off. And then I keep thinking, I'm like, oh, where was your sister all these years that you mentioned in the first season? Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's where that, that those are mine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one more thing I want so to add to your last things... point. Oh shit. Yep. No, no, no. Please uh, go. Go. So it's kind of inconsistency, but it's also like two. It's one of those things where, like, you know, you wake up or in horror movies where, like oh, someone's coming to the door or something, and the phone rings immediately. It's just those things that's really lazy, how they just... Like, obviously, I don't want to watch someone sitting around for, you know, hours on end waiting for something to happen that further advances the plot. But mm-hmm. it's also, I hate those things where just, you know, everything just falls into their lap just consistently to drive it forward. So it's just, I don't know, it makes it seem more lazy to me. I think no, Deadpool yeah. 2 even makes fun of it. All the time. But, mm-hmm. Yeah. Just well, like what that. it is, it's like you, you kind of you kind of forget your history. Like that's that's my problem with like let's say like a Game of Thrones or some of these other shows that are so big. It's like, have you guys forgotten all the stuff that you introduced? Like, does that like have you guys forgotten your own history? Or maybe we're just paying attention to it way more than the people that are making it, which still doesn't make sense. Yeah. Like, especially when it comes to character arcs, like that person wouldn't do that. Like, or the whole basis of the person. Uh, being who they are or why we like them is because of their own growth. Yeah. That means that they've turned the corner. Otherwise, there was no such thing as character development. It was just them being not themselves for seven seasons and they decided to be themselves in the last season. Like Jamie Lannister running back to his sister. Yeah. What such stupid shit like that. But like, and, and that stuff bothers me more than any other little thing is like that inconsistency, just yeah. Yeah. inconsistency and them not knowing their own history and well, that's that where i have a big problem with how i met your mother it's like know your own history man you guys created the show mm-hmm. but whatever um now then last topic this one's gonna be a fun one yeah vas do you want to kick us off do you want anybody sure. else to start 
Uh, I could start it off. Yeah. Uh, so Disney's going to be live action casting. By so, the Russos, by the way. So that's by the Russos. Thing. Yeah. So you brought up a good point in how they actually said, well, they don't know how they're, how they weren't for sure going to follow the same tone as the, as the, the previous, OG, the OG. So that also kind of plays into effect who you would cast too at the same token, because you got to find the right tone, right? So if you, if it's meant to be like more, okay, kind of fun, friendly, whatever, then you'd probably find characters you think, okay, maybe they'll fit the bill a little bit better. Or if you know it's going to be on the gritty side, maybe potentially. It's still Disney. You have to f- remember that. But if it's going to be a little bit more serious, I guess you could say, then you'll definitely pick different actors for that. So, yeah, something to bring up and keep in mind, I guess. But um, mm-hmm. my first casting, I did two, but I'll chime in on the other ones when we talk about it a little bit more. So I did an all Greek casting. Any, oh, any any character, any actor, actress of Greek descent. So we cast old Hercules, young Hercules, Phil, Hades, Meg, Pain, Panic, Zeus, and Hera. And that's how IMDb actually listed them as like kind of top build or top characters, whatever. Right. So my old Hercules is Theo James. Theo he, James. He played in like he was in Blood Wars, like with the 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 most recent Underworld. He was in that uh, Divergent uh, series. Okay. He was the second guy, so you might you might not recognize him. He's fairly well known, I guess you could say ish. Um, young Hercules, uh, David Mazuz, who played Bruce in Gotham. Oh, okay. Also, He's yeah. Greek. Oh yeah, He's I did Greek, that for Mosaic. Greek I can remember that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, Phil. I did Michael Chiklis. Oh man, that's so good. Just his demeanor, <laughs> everything. Yeah, I just think of like he was—he was very serious. Like I haven't seen him. The, the Shield, I man. I haven't the seen Shield. shield. Is I so him. good. He was in Gotham. Yes, and he played really good in that. And then the only thing I saw him in before was the original Fantastic Four. So he was in that. But I just think his demeanor and his stance, stature, also helped feel that. Um, Hades. Uh, I have John Stamos or Billy Zane. Oh, Billy Zane would be funny. Yeah, one of those two. Uh, Meg, and I can't believe I never thought of it. I had actually had to go look on this. Like I found all the actresses and actresses of uh, Greek oh. descent is Marie Aviropoulos, who plays in The 100. She's a fairly okay. young actress, but she's got like attitude. She's got the look. I, I think she'd be a, almost a perfect Meg in both my castings, but um yeah she's good uh she kind of looks like a young marissa tomei oh yeah yeah she's got the look for sure and the attitude if you watch the hundred uh on one of that netflix series it's pretty good she's good in that too oh wow yeah so she played yeah she's good uh pain i have zach galifianakis so pain is the short fat one yep and then panic i have jason manzoukas that's also really good. Pimento, for those who don't know who that is. He's Greek, too. Adrian oh Pimento. Yeah. yeah. Man, the last name has an ass in it. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, Matt, I did that Turkish Mulos descent, thing so long ago, and I remember having all these yeah. people on there, too. And I was like, oh, yeah, I yeah. did a whole like fucking slideshow on all these people. And in Brooklyn Nine-Nine, he mentions how he plays a little bazooki. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Zeus, I cast Hugh Jackman. Okay. Oh. Yeah, and Hera Molina Kanakaridis from CSI no, Jennifer New York. Jennifer Aniston in this. Oh. You know what? I thought about her as Hera as well. She could be a seconder for Hera. Meg, she'd, she'd be an older Meg. Right. Uh, I, I thought I'd try to do more younger characters because, like, okay, how old is the old uh, Hercules? Like, maybe mid-20s-ish mm-hmm. at best? Some, uh, the say. old Hercules is probably, I would say, 25 Oh, there He's you go. definitely under thirty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's why I kind of want to be more younger actors and and the actresses for those two things. So that's my casting of Greek only. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. Did you want to go through your other list? Uh, I could real quick. Yeah. So old Hercules, I have Liam Hemsworth or Chris Pratt. Okay. Mm. Young Hercules, Timothy Chalamet. Oh, that's so funny. I almost had him on there, but I moved him out. That's so oh, okay. funny that you put it, that. It's that lanky stature. That's kind of where I you picture young Hercules because you're trying to try to be close to the 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 uh, Disney version, the original. For Still, sure. I have either Andy Serkis or Peter Dinklage. 
Okay. Hades, Benedict Cumberbatch, or Nikolai Costa? Oh Waldo. yeah, yeah, yeah. Meg, Emma Stone, or N- Natalie Dormer? Oh, Natalie Dormer would be a really good one. Yeah. Wow. Pain, Josh Gad. Yeah. Panic is Charlie Day. Mm-hmm. Okay. And Zeus, I'm kind of second guessing him, but he could be good too, just because of his uh, his gravitas and his voice. Is Hugo Weaving for Zeus or Sean mm-hmm. Bean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Hera, I put Kate Beckinsale just because I wanted her in there, but <laughs> or Kate Winslet. So either Kate. Either Kate's. Wow, Either that's Kate's. a good one. I still think you nailed it with Pain and Panic in that first one. Zach yeah. Galifianakis and Jason Man- Jason Mandukas? Yeah. Yeah, they'd be so good. Uh, Anthony, cast okay. our Hercules Russo Brothers movie. So I didn't go as in-depth, but I got a couple. and I've been looking online, too, so not all these are original, but they're fan casting, so I don't give a shit. Uh, for I was always for some reason I had uh the rock in my head for Hercules and then I realized oh he already played Hercules so he's out yeah. the way. Right. But I saw one I really liked. Uh, for young Hercules it'd be Tom Holland, and for adult Dacre Montgomery who was playing Billy in Stranger Things. Mm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, That's a good one. This one everybody loved and I loved it as well. For Phil, have Danny DeVito play him. Not right. Joke. Yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, Hades, I think Willem Dafoe would absolutely fucking crush it. Like with the Green Goblin oh. kind of persona. Like oh, I haven't seen, especially yeah. in the Lighthouse too. Like fuck. Yeah, especially then, with his chin. Oh my god, yeah. He like looking at there's a face face by face. He looks the role exactly, which is a compliment. Oh. Willem, don't come at me. <laughs> and then for Pain and Panic, uh, after seeing these guys in Toy Story four, they were easily kind of like my idea for the duo. Uh, Key and Peel. Okay. Oh, those would be really great. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, and that's all I've got for my quick list. Okay, no here's. Hera? I don't know. I yeah, who'd you, who would you wild. have as a Zeus. Zeus? Who would be an old man, or not too old, but. Mm-hmm. Fuck, I honestly that's don't know. You could you could play the, like that are old man, or you play that they're gods and immortal, so they'd stay young probably more than most. Right. Honestly, like, I don't want to be that guy, but Chris Hemsworth, you know, he already plays a god, God of Thunder. <laughs> I, I thought it'd be just hilarious to put Liam Hemsworth as the young mm. Hercules and Chris Hemsworth as the <laughs> old Hercules. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just to piss him off. Like, yeah, you yeah. already have Thor, now give him Hercules. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, actually like... really good. I like that stuff. I like the I like that casting. That's mm-hmm. really good. Um, okay, so here's mine. Young Hercules is Lucas Till. You guys might remember him from X Men: First Class and Days of Future Past. He played Cyclops' so. brother. Oh, uh, he okay, had yeah. the um, beam in the center of his chest. Oh yeah, right, right. Um, oh yeah, he yeah, was in so BMS's he, Golden he... Arm. Is that what it was? Yeah, yeah that's, okay. that's for me. That's I, I, I haven't first. seen that, but I know of it. Oh, fair enough. Okay, and then an old Hercules would be Army Hammer. Oh, that's a good one. You might. Uh, and and I picked those two as well because Lucas Till looks like he could evolve into an army hammer, like mm-hmm. Pokemon style. Okay. My Meg, my Meg is either Rose Byron. She's my first choice. And Rose okay. Byron was in Bridesmaids. She was also in um, X-Men First Class as well. Mm-hmm. And that's how I came across her. But I liked her attitude in Bridesmaids. Or Evangeline Lilly. Ooh, Just because now that I'm rewatching Lost, Evangeline Lilly's got that like I don't care slash I'm gonna protect myself and lie to you type of attitude. Like I just yeah. saw that there. My Hades is Sam Rockwell because oh, I love that's that a dude. Good choice. Yeah, and I think he'd be really good because he's quippy and and fast on his feet like a James Woods is. Mm-hmm. My pain and panic. This one I think uh, Anthony's gonna like Ben Schwartz and Bill Hader. Oh, yeah. oh my god, that is a very good one. Right? Not too bad, hey? And then my Phil is not Danny DeVito, even though I think he would be funny. It's Bob Odenkirk. Okay, yeah. AKA Better Call Saul. Really? I think he's got good. that uh Oh yeah. He he's got that kind of like I he can get annoyed very easy and play it well and couldn't be bothered, but at the same time be the guy rooting for you on the side. I think he's got that that thing. My Hera is Olivia Coleman, which 
I hate giving her this role because I think she deserves more because I love, I adore Olivia Coleman. I think she's just the best. Um, but I think as Hera, she would be awesome because she's just, she's just a loving person. She's just a lovely person in general. Mm-hmm. But my Zeus is Tate Donovan. And for those of you who don't know, Tate Donovan voiced the original adult Hercules in the cartoon. Oh. That would actually be a very so nice I think boss. That's kind of the, I'd say, most plausible because they love doing that shit. They had Optimus Prime uh, being voiced by the original. Did they have Mufasa yeah, I, in Lion King? Yeah, they had. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. That's what I was thinking of. They had James Earl Jones voice Mufasa. So I'm thinking, I'm like, I think Tate Donovan would be really good as an OG Hercules because his voice isn't as boyish. So, mm-hmm. and even if they needed to, like, it's not the same as Rip Torn. Rip Torn's got a voice of his own. But if they're going a different route, Mm-hmm. And then I think having that homage, just like in God of War 3, they brought Kevin Sorbo to play Hercules, like to voice oh, yeah, Hercules yeah. in God of War 3, right? So I was like, yeah. Kevin Sorbo was on my list as well. Mm-hmm. I think he'd be a decent Zeus, but I think Tate Donovan having played already the original Hercules, like old Hercules, would work. Yeah. So that's my list. That's Destiny Fulfilled. That's de- exactly that's destiny fulfilled. <laughs> I will find a way. I can go the distance. Yeah, that's solid. That's casting. the theme song. No, that was. I think overall, I think between our three lists, we should yeah. just submit the, our list to the Russo brothers and be like, you know what, guys, we've got this. You only have a few people to pick from. Exactly. All we want is a small loan of a million dollars. Thank you. Yeah. Or a just piece. cameos on our podcast. And, by the way, and. Yeah. Oh man, can you imagine? That'd be so awesome. Apparently, they're starting. The Bruso brothers are starting this old like pizza film thing. I they're on Instagram or just online in general, and it's like a show about filmmaking in a way. But they also watch old time movies and have pizza with people. I don't know. It's supposed That's to be this cool sweet. thing. This will make you happy. But I've actually yeah. been watching Seinfeld and uh, Kramer's idea to have that restaurant where you go and make the pizza pie and do it yourself. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Oh uh, man, that's so good! Wait until you get to his coffee table book. Oh okay. yeah, I think that's, I finished that's all. Be the of, best. I think I'm halfway through season two, and I started like yesterday or some shit. Mm. Season one was only like five. Are you liking though. it? I am actually. It's kind of like yeah, the yeah. humor is kind of lost on me. Just I think that generational thing, like some lines, but also some things are just I understand what he's meaning, understand the situation. It's just funny yeah. regardless. But some cultural things are lost on me. Mm-hmm. For sure, but I think also you'll notice that when you get into the later seasons, you'll see how much people pulled from Seinfeld. Like a lot of the 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 way that they presented certain arguments of things, you're gonna be like, oh, so this is kind of where it came from because it came from Seinfeld's comic or comedy, right? So mm-hmm. yeah, there's so much there. It's it's pretty awesome. But that's that's awesome you did that. Vast great choices, by the way, for topics. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I was worried about the, yeah. a little worried about the first um, one, but good about uh, Hercules. That's all good. Oh man, they they were both really good because now we can just like watch our the shows that we're watching and get super Excellent. annoyed with this shit. <laughs> it's like but the we'll glass do it shattering, together. right? <laughs> the glass yeah. shattering, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, that I'm episode, right if anybody ever needed to get into How I Met Your Mother and they said, well, give me an episode to describe it, I think I've mentioned it on the show as well. I'm like, watch Glass Shatter. That's all you need to know. I think that encompasses every single bit of uh, of How I Met Your Mother, like in one episode. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's fair. Just like Seinfeld for me is a Chinese restaurant. <laughs> I'm excited to get to that episode. I've been waiting for it. I'm so curious what you think, man. I'm very curious. Um. Anyways, that's all I got. What do you gentlemen have? Anything else? No, I do not. All right. Well, Vass, this was your birthday episode. Until mm-hmm. next week. Um, that's all we've got. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We're switching some stuff up. Obviously, you've noticed, if you're listening on YouTube, that we've been showcasing some video game footage. And I noticed today that our thumbnails are looking a little bland. So I decided to upgrade them. So we've upgraded that we've got a new series that uh the three of us are working on it is essentially taking our facts that anthony puts together throwing them on youtube and then just kind of adding an extra level of you know of bringing the two worlds together even more so so i'm super excited about that and i think we've almost nailed down a format we finally got a thumbnail so that works and uh 
yeah, it's going to be really sweet. So check that out. Make sure you guys are following the F Word podcast on Instagram to get facts, reviews, news, all sorts of stuff. And on the F Word podcast on Facebook as well. Mm -hmm. You could find me on Twitter at the F Words G. You can email us at the F Word podcast at gmail.com. And for your memeing pleasure, you always have to head over to the Lazy Canadian on Instagram as well. That's all I have for another week. Gentlemen, I thank you. And Vass, happy birthday, bro. Thanks, man. Birthday, Vass. I'm, I'm G. Oh, there it is. Sorry. I think what's happening is we're getting an echo. So if you notice an echo in this episode, I think it's also messing with our audio as well. So that's always fun. Sweet, oh, right? Nice. Cool. Dude. It's nice. I'm, yeah, and until next week, I'm G. I'm Anthony. And I'm Vass. And we are out. Thank you.